Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. So today, as you guys can probably tell and saw from the title, we're gonna be making a designer crew neck Chanel inspired sweater. So the reason I'm doing this is because if you guys remember like three months back, I did like a DIY Nike vintage inspired sweater. And you guys know what? That video has 10,000 views. Like I honestly didn't even realize it until I saw over the weekend. So I was like, what the heck? That's crazy because we have not been getting that crazy amount of views lately and I just can't believe it hit 10K. With that being said, that is why I'm gonna be doing a Chanel inspired sweater. So right here, I have just got a plain black sweater. In our previous video as well, I did mention that we had a bunch of like plain blank boxes and I thought you know what this is the perfect time to do one yes I know as I mentioned this is copyright stuff it's definitely not legal but it's literally all just for fun and to show you guys what my embroidery machine over on this side can do so without further ado let's get into the video if you guys enjoy it don't forget to give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let's go all right so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure up my sweater please excuse my hand if you're new to the channel and you don't know I burnt my hand recently so it's kind of like healing and a little bit scarred still but I always love using this right here this is what I measure all my t-shirts and crewnecks with it just makes it perfectly aligned so definitely always have that I've got a ruler to make sure that the sweater is straight as well I have pins. I always use two pins in every single jumper. And I've got this chalk right here. So this is like a chalk pen, which is really easy to remove afterwards. I always use a chalk pen when I have black garments. Now to me, that looks aligned pretty good. And what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but there's all these little indication lines along here. And what I do is I get from one indication line to the other line with my ruler to make a straight line. And now I'm going to mark two little lines on either side because this is going to help me when I'm hooping up the jumper. So I've got my two lines right there as you guys can see. And now I need to mark where the center point of what I want the design to be. So again, with this little like um, t-shirt crew neck measurement thing, it's perfect because there's so many marks. You can't really tell because it is quite clear but it shows you exactly where the center is. So that's the center of the sweater. And for me, I like to have my designs about 10 to 12 centimeters down, depending on the width and height of it. So for this one, I'm gonna go 12 centimeters. So today to hoop up the sweater, I will be using my magnetic hoop right here. This is not a Mighty Hoops one. This is honestly just like a I would say rip-off version. It was super cheap and affordable. I got it from overseas and that's why I have like so many of these. I do find that the magnet is a little bit stronger, but if you guys want to know more about these magnetic hoops that I have, let me know and I can do like a solo video dedicated to that. But the size I'm using right here is 20 centimeters in width and I think the height is like 15 centimeters. So that's roughly the size of my logo that it's going to be. I'm pretty sure the logo I currently have for this design is 16 centimeters in width and then the height is just in proportion. So I'm just going to bring my magnetic hoop apart and we're going to hoop up the sweater. And just like that, the sweater is now hooped up and ready to go. I also like to pull around the edges, not too much, but just to make sure that there's no loose fabric inside in the middle of it. And again, I apologize. I just showed you my ugly ass hand. But anyways, let's put this into the machine and I will show you guys the design. So this right here is the design that I'm doing. It's just like a Chanel one. Honestly, I pretty much just got this off Google. It was the first thing that came up and then I digitized it. If you guys want to know more about digitizing, let me know. But I've quite shown quite a bit if you watch all of our vlogs and videos like that. So. The hoop is in the machine right now, super easy to go in, and now I gotta grab the stabilizer. The stabilizer that I'm using is just like a medium tearaway stabilizer. For me, this personally works. I use it pretty much all the time because I'm always embroidering a lot of jumpers, hoodies, sweaters, and all that. And because that's quite thick, I find that medium is good. And I also like how I can tear it away because it's not just in your way if you have just a normal st stabilizer. So all I'm gonna do right now is press this button right here and do a trace. What the trace does is just make sure that the design is in the correct location that I want it to be on the sweater and everything seems to be all good. Another reason why you have to do a trace as well is to make sure the needle is not going to hit the edge of the hoop because if that happens, 
goodbye to your machine. As you guys can see as well right here, the design is 7,858 stitches, which will usually take about 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the speed that I want the machine to go. machine it is done dun, 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 dun. this is what it looks like honestly I'm pretty amazed at how well it works it looks nice and like full the embroidery quality actually looks really good so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take off the hoop right now oh. and now as I mentioned because I use a tear away stabilizer all I have to do is get to, get the shirt or the sweater whatever I'm ha embroidering on and just carefully tear away the stabilizer. This is the back of the embroidery now. You guys can see it looks really clean. You can't even tell that the stabilizer there. Now all I've got to do is just remove these little chalk marks with some water, give it a press, and we'll see what the final result looks like. And just like that, the sweater is embroidered. Honestly, as I mentioned, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. The sizing of it compared to the sweater is actually really good as well. It took about 16 to 17 minutes to embroider and my machine speed was at 700, which is reasonably fast. So let me know, let me know if you guys do embroidery and how long it takes for you guys to embroider something similar to this or similar to 8,000 stitches because I always wonder if I'm like on par to other people or it's slower or faster or whatnot. Anyways, let's put this on, do a little bit of B-roll shot, see what this looks like, and then we'll end the video. Anyways guys, we are going to end the video there. I hope you guys enjoyed it and it was a little bit of a helpful insight to anyone that's looking at getting into making some like custom DIY sweaters and things like that with embroidery. This was honestly just a little bit of fun to do. I know that there's like all this copyright stuff, but I won't be selling it or anything. This is just like my own little design that I wanted to make to show you guys. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a good day, evening or night, wherever you are in the world. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you guys enjoy it. And I will see you guys in our next video. Also, I'm planning on doing like a little segment of embroidering different like designs and things like that i kind of want to do a jordan or something next so comment down below any other little logos and things you want me to test out just for fun as i would say because i have so many blanks that i can just embroider things on so i reckon it'll be fun to do anyways bye guys